Now Docker has available uh, four options. Effectively two of them are configuration by file and two of them are configuration by command line. The separation is that one's designed for swarm and one is designed for kind of a standalone instance. So you have the docker run and the docker compose for standalone while you have the docker service and the docker stack for the docker swarm. So today's example is based on Docker Run and Docker Compose. Uh, if you would like me to do um, a video about Docker Service or Docker Stack, let me know. Um, ideally, you might, you might say, hey, just skip it, go full Kubernetes. And if you want me to do that again, just write in the comments below and I'll take the feedback. Anyway, for the starting point, we're just going to go ahead and create a custom uh, Docker image. If you're interested in creating Docker images and using Docker files, um, please go back to one of our earlier videos. We explain it in a bit more detail. Uh, we also demonstrate how you can use smaller containers by developing with something like Alpine Linux rather than some of the larger ones like uh, Ubuntu, uh, CentOS, uh, Red Hat, etc. So please, you know, just, just go back to those videos if that you're interested in how Docker files work. For the moment, we're just going to go ahead and create a custom image. And the reason for this is simply to prove that you could do this with any old image you wanted and the number of steps that are involved. So in our case, uh, first of all, creating the Docker file, that's our step one. So this would represent our continuous deployment and continuous integration layer where we would custom code and copy it into our custom uh, container image and then move forward with the next step. So I'm just going to go ahead with now the build process and once that's done, that that's the first step on your continuous integration um, layer. Then after that, what we're going to do, we're going to use um, obviously WordPress, if you've been following what's on screen, as our example application. Um, the reason I'm using that as our example application is because it's a very well-known application amongst the one thing. And the other um, part of this is that it's very um, let's say um, good example because you have a front end and a back end so you have a database layer and you have an application layer and that's probably indicative of a lot of applications out there some may have more layers where you have things like search engines um, uh, integration layers or even sub processes that have got specific application servers dedicated to them uh, from this point of view you may have many layers you may have a simple one or two the example in this case doesn't really matter the number of layers that comes down to you at a later point what we want to demonstrate here is simply that a multi-layered application so in this case one that makes use of two or more layers can be managed in the following ways so the first example that we're running through here is we're creating the database container so in this case the uh, mysql and then we're going to create the custom uh, WordPress image container. So now that we've got our custom WordPress image ready, we can start with creating the MySQL layer. And what we're going to do is instead of going through the normal things that I see a lot of people do in terms of mistakes of exposing the MySQL uh, database ports and then um, going to the WordPress and exposing its ports and then connecting the two over the network. Um, that, that's first of all very messy, wouldn't really recommend it and it, it's not the best way of going about it. So from the command line you can use a, a technique called linkage. So in this case we can basically put a link between the two containers. So when, in this case as you can see we're not exposing any ports on the database at all. So this is a completely sealed off container, we can't connect to it through anything other than docker itself to go check the command line maybe. Um, and, and that's actually quite a nice way of securing down your DB layer. Um, not always great, but it's good. Um, and then from this point of view, you, you then have the ability to say, I'm going to link my app server to it. So the app server is the only one that can talk to it. Now, uh, there are other ways of doing this using uh, dedicated networks. So you can create a network in Docker and then say only... Uh, that the that network is assigned to this container and so on. That's perhaps a little bit better because you still have the flexibility to be able to troubleshoot and open the ports for custom, let's say, um, investigation. 
But that aside, uh, we now have our WordPress server. We're going to link it to our MySQL server that we called MySQL earlier. So we have a, a straightforward connection here and the name that we're going to link it with. So we're going to call it MySQL, no big change. And we're going to expose uh, port 8080 for our WordPress application server. Um, and then we're, we're going to run it uh, non-interactively and we're just going to put in the name of our custom image that we created earlier. So if I go ahead and now check uh, with Docker PS, I should see that we have both containers up and running. So we have one WordPress container, we have one MySQL container, and you can see that the MySQL container was up for nearly a minute and the WordPress one lasts seven seconds. So you can see there's a bit of time delay between typing out those two commands. And you can also see what ports and other parts are exposed. So with that in mind, um, what we're now going to do is we're just going to go quickly through and check that WordPress is functioning and what you might see just to prove that it is working. Now obviously since this is a completely clean container, never been used before, you have all the default selection menu options. And if we had customized our image earlier or maybe made some tweaks in terms of adding the restore function so we have the WordPress database up and running automatically, you can go through a lot of options and have this basically running as if it was a pre-built app. And, and honestly, in a real-world environment, that's what you would probably do. You would have it up and running immediately. But we just wanted to prove that this is how you go about it in a command line way. So generally speaking, it's taken us around, what are we looking at, maybe six minutes so far, to configure our WordPress container with our MySQL container. And obviously, you could have put this into a batch file and you can run it in a couple of seconds but it's not quite the same and it makes it a little bit more difficult to reuse. So what's the alternative? Well, um, if you do not have a swarm instance, so basically a Docker swarm, then you have the option to use a thing called compose. And by the way, compose is compatible with stack config files, but compose doesn't make use of all the options that you have in a Docker swarm. Because obviously there's more options there because you have more nodes, whilst compose is designed more of a single node type um, configuration file. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just show you the same basic demo of creating two containers, but with the difference being that we're going to do this from a file instead of from command line. Now, the file itself is going to be a YAML file, uh, just yet another markup language, so no biggie there. Um, but obviously, uh, YAML does have some restrictions, so it's important to remember the spacing in your files when you're creating YAML files. On that aside, um, it is really useful to do. So we're just going to go ahead and create a brand new YAML file for our WordPress demo. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in a front end, a back end, and we're going to use some of the extra configuration that we can put in easily, which is we're going to put um, things like names of our containers and things like depends on. So our WordPress container isn't going to start until our database container is running. So these are some of the advantages. We can also put in things like storage volumes and have them dynamically created. So we can say, okay, our database volume so in this case uh, where we store our databases is going to fit into a volume called uh, db underscore data and that's just going to be a volume somewhere on the docker server uh, the result for this is that we then have a persistent storage so if we kill the container and fire it up again the databases still exist on the file system so we didn't lose any data so that's already one advantage uh, we can also specify a lot more options there than we did previously without having the five or six lines of commands running across the screen. So it makes it things a lot easier. Now, before we get into that, I just want to show you one other thing, um, which is the difference between the Compose containers and uh, volumes and setting up volumes uh, directly. But before we do either of that, we've got to quickly shut down our demo. So we're going to just stop our existing servers so that we can fire up the new ones without having port conflicts.
So I'm just going to stop the WordPress server and then stop the MySQL server so that we can move forward. So now that we can see that they're stopped and there's no active containers running, um, you can create volumes and you can save data to volumes. And if you were doing this by command line, this is probably something we would need to do in advance. We need to create the volume. So I'll just show you how to create a volume. Um, and we'll create it with exactly the same name. So we're going to say uh, db underscore data. And that'll just create a local um, volume container. Now, we're going to start up our compose file. Um, so that's the dash f, the name of the file, and then uh, dash d, because we don't want to see it, and then the command for up or down. Uh, whoops, uh, up, I forget, and then syntax is important at this point. Uh, up has to come first, and can't put the d in between. Anyway, so you can see that it's gone off and created our compose container 1 and our compose container 2, so we have one instance of each. And you can see we've got the names, so we've got the, our basically two containers up and running. And we're just going to go quickly check that our web server has come up and that we can basically go through the same principles that we could earlier with our command line version. You know, enter the site details, enter the name, blah, blah, blah. So, so far all looks pretty normal. Now, let's look a little bit closer at a couple of other things. As an example, we did create our storage volume earlier, but in this case, we're not actually using it. So if we look at the, our storage volumes, you can actually see there's a compose data being created. So the db underscore data didn't actually do anything. We didn't touch it. So whilst that could be specified in any of our command line ones, it's not being used by our compose. So that that's a kind of an important factor to think about that they are separated off and the same happens when you have a swarm instance and you start using um, services or stacks you the storage data gets created dynamically on occasions so anyway what we're going to do is we're going to delete that particular one that we created in terms of data volume and we're going to go ahead and configure our WordPress then we're going to shut down the compose which will basically kill the containers. And then we're going to go ahead and start them up again and prove that all the information that we did with the configuration is still there because we haven't killed the compose uh, data volume. So in order to do that, and best way to do that is we know that we're going to have a rather blank um, looking uh, site at the beginning. So I'm going to make uh, the template, just pick one of the random uh, off-the-shelf templates so that we know that it's not the hello world default that you would normally see with a clean container. So in this case we now have a nice image, shall we say, on the front. Nice and relaxing, a plant pot. Um, and we have the my test site. So if we go ahead and now shut down the uh, compose, which is also nice because it allows you to shut down multiple containers at once rather than needing to individually set statuses. Whilst with our original command line, we need to shut them down one at a time. Here we can shut down both simultaneously. And you can see they're now offline and we've even got the compose network is uh, removed. So we'll just quickly check the volumes and we can see that the compose data volume is still there. So we'll go back and we'll now start up our compose file once more. So we see creating our two containers once more. And we can go back and now check to see what state our WordPress website is in. Whether it's a completely blank empty or if it's maintained our data. So in this case we can see it's quite happily maintained our data. So we've not lost anything even though we're now running with new Docker containers. And that can be used even if you're changing versions of MySQL or WordPress. It's a straightforward uh, change of the Docker container, which doesn't necessarily impact the file itself. Now, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, hit that subscribe for more content.